Hello and welcome. My name is Stephen Dickens, and you're joining us here on a Futurum Tech webcast sponsored by HPE. I'm joined by my colleague, Krista May Gomba. Hey, Krista, welcome to the show. Hi, Stephen. Thanks so much. So, we're here to talk about a paper we've been working with the team at HPE on um, around some of their compute resources. I've been tracking the um, ProLiance space for a while. Um, really fascinating to dig in with that team. Uh, we'll put a link to the paper so that you can read some of the research there. But maybe let's dive in here. What was your thoughts, Krista? And then maybe I'll come back and we can go back back around here. What were some of your thoughts on the research and the analysis that we did? Yeah, yeah. So I think, Stephen, maybe taking a quick step back and kind of thinking about the key kind of customer perspective, right, and what we see customers really looking for in kind of, um, you know, a compute architecture moving forward. Um, and I always like to think about it in terms of the challenges that we see customers facing. And um, just a couple of things that really come to mind are the issues around staffing and headcount and kind of limitations there and really how IT teams are, are really trying to do more with less from that perspective. But at the same time, we see that they're facing, you know, all of these growing cyber threats, um, we're seeing that they're having, you know, sprawl, right, in terms of their infrastructure and their data that is limiting their productivity um, and also really kind of their ability to innovate and have competitive advantage. Um, so when we think about kind of um, the need to either migrate to a new architecture from a server perspective or kind of, you know, continue with the status quo, I think this really kind of um, sets that tone in terms of why the need is there. Um, so again, just thinking in that customer perspective, yeah. I'd agree. I'd agree hundred percent. I mean, the, the market's more dynamic. We've, we're obviously seeing, um, a need for flexibility from yes. a HP perspective that often means green lake for compute specifically in this mm -hmm. space, addressing kind of that need to change to a more hybrid consumption based model, leveraging some mm -hmm. of the power of those cloud type models. We're doing that either yeah. in your data center or in a co-located data center. And it's interesting you talk about this sort of point around um, moving and staying current. HP is on its 11th generation of the ProLiant servers. So you would think this is a consistency play. I can put these things in and, you know, HP has been doing this for a while. But what came through from the research for me is there's a cost to that in action. There's a cost if you're not refreshing on a regular basis. And I think the key takeaway for me is that's up and down the stack. As you mentioned, it's everything from cybersecurity through to operational right down to the performance and some of the eco um, sort of characteristics of these servers. So fascinating for me, kind of up and down the entire stack to address some of those more modern workloads and, and applications that we're seeing coming through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Stephen. And um, I know we've kind of both touched on it, but I think maybe we could spend a minute or two talking the security perspective. Um, you know, I think that's not only has it been, you know, something we both brought up, but I think it's just a major topic in the industry. And actually, um, both as a component of this research, but also um, in addition to this research, working with our Futurum Labs group, um, we've actually developed what we call a whole um, security framework um, to really evaluate infrastructure and servers from the standpoint of, um, you know, different features to make sure that the infrastructure is meeting critical security requirements. Um, so, you know, certainly the HPE portfolio we see meeting, you know, a very large component of these features. Um, but it's something that even just kind of beyond, you know, the hardware itself, one thing is just the ability to make sure that things like, um, you know, firmware updates are, you know, um, being able to kind of be rolled out um, on a streamlined basis, um, make sure that certain, you know, verification from a third party supply chain, for example, you know, that this is something that's factored in. So it even goes beyond just the hardware itself. Um, and again, I think that's something that resonated um, in the research here that we've done with HPE as well. Yeah, I mean, they call it the hardware root of trust. It's been able mm -hmm. to ensure that everything from a firmware and BIOS right through the, to the operating system, 
right through to the server, you know, and down that to the server itself, making sure mm -hmm. that you can track that so that, you know, it's not been tampered with as it comes through the supply chain to your data center so that you can really sort of start to look at all levels, whether it's a logistics, whether it's firmware and BIOS, whether it's the server itself from a tamper perspective, looking at all of that and being able to say, I trust connecting this server to my network and then I can sort of deploy from there with it. Based on a solid foundation of security, I think HP is taking a holistic look at that and all the concerns at the various points throughout that supply chain and has innovated throughout and below the stack as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So what were the other things that sort of came out for you, Krista? I mean, I think from a compute point of view, we've seen a lot around AI. I think there's been a lot of focus there from the, the, the HPE team. Is that something that sort of came through for you? Yeah, yeah. So a couple of things were around. Um, so the graphics accelerators, um, right, kind of the support for these advanced graphic accelerators and how that can really make these machines a good fit for, as you mentioned, some of these AI ML workloads and just in general, any application that's going to be very data intensive, which, of course, those tend to be a lot of our modern our modern workloads um, and applications, even beyond just AI. Um, you know, I think the other kind of maybe capability, if you will, um, would be um, that we do see that this next generation from HPE can support better bandwidth from an IO perspective, um, which is going to, you know, certainly make these systems a good fit for those workloads too. Yeah, I think as people look at AI, we're seeing a lot of innovation in the public cloud, but people are starting to think about now moving into deployment and at scale. And some of those private models are going to have to drive different requirements. So I think there's a space across both public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud deployments for some of these AI models. And I think, you know, we're going to see organizations look to deploy increasingly in these type of hybrid models rather than just purely public cloud because they're going to need security, they're going to need privacy, they're going to need data sovereignty. They're going to be hooking this up to um, on-premise or private cloud database infrastructures and that data layer. So I think there's a whole space for innovation and being able to control that stack um, from a cost envelope perspective. We see the opportunity for workloads to kind of escape and kind of create their own momentum from a f uh, financial cost perspective. We see them at the whole FinOps space on the public cloud. The ability to constrain that and increasingly from HP with their Green Lake for Compute, be able to right size that infrastructure to be able to suit your requirements as you start a project, but also bring on capacity and have your OPEX match to those requirements. Yeah. Yeah, it's very important from kind of a cost efficiency perspective. And I think, you know, we have seen that a lot of the allure and appeal of the cloud, you know, has been the potential for greater cost economics compared to on-prem. But I think we all know that, unfortunately, in reality, that doesn't always become the case. So I think tools like this, you know, certainly help customers to be able to have, you know, a stronger sense of what exactly their cost dynamics are and to take steps to utilize the cloud in a more cost efficient way, which is very important, of course. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing repatriation happen. I mean, it's kind yep. of a dirty word that nobody wants to talk about because people don't want to be a cloud denier. But we are seeing it occur. We're seeing people work, move workloads initially to the public cloud to get that flexibility and to get that um, um, some of the adjacencies. But then they're realizing potentially that cost overruns and they're able, then repatriating workloads back onto on-prem to talk about kind of cost containment or from a data sovereignty point of view, maybe they've got some concerns. So I think from a HPE perspective, being able to provide servers in that type of consumption-based model with HP um, GreenLake for compute gives customers that kind of best of both worlds. You can get that flexibility and scale up that you would typically sort of imagine you could only get on the cloud but you're able to get that either in your own data center or in a co-location data center 
and get all the additional benefits of that security and and kind of reduced cost management. One Absolutely. of the other things that was interesting for me that came out from chatting to the team was just really the holistic focus from the HPE team and kind of how they've thought about this up and down the stack. Um, and it putting that in the context of the ability for clients to really act now Obviously, you know, people are on maybe longer refresh cycles. But what came through for me was just the benefits of moving now, being able to refresh, move to this new Gen 11 environment. Was there anything there that stood out for you, Krista, as kind of reasons why people should be thinking about this now as they think about their on-premises or co-located server infrastructure? Yeah, yeah. So I think from the standpoint of of thinking about it now, um, I mean, as you mentioned, um, you know, there is so the key cost that I would say would be so I think we've touched on a couple of them, right? So I think there's the security component, right? And certainly, there's a very um, potentially substantial um, costs associated with a breach, you know, of course, whether that be data loss, downtime, things of that nature. I know we were just kind of having the conversation around, you know, kind of the cost economics of the infrastructure itself um, and really kind of taking steps to right fine or kind of, um, you know, optimize that. Um, I would say the other area that we haven't necessarily touched on yet in depth in our conversation is costs associated with um, day-to-day management and you know day-to-day management responsibilities. Um, so I kind of alluded a few minutes ago to the fact that um, you know we see these IT teams are you know. Um, just quite overburdened, right? So, so they're dealing with limited headcount. They're trying to really stretch their people as thin as possible. So what that means is that the more that they can be, you know, elevated from some of these day-to-day management capabilities um, is going to, um, you know, really be important in terms of allowing them to serve the business in a more strategic way. Um, so I know that um, as part of this, you know, kind of the Gen 11 launch here with HP um, or the portfolio, you know, I should say, is the ability to have that kind of, you know, cloud driven, really centralized management of, you know, all of the kind of compute, um, you know, with the servers and kind of the compute resources there from kind of that single pane of glass approach and to use capabilities like automation um, to do things like onboard a large number of, of servers more quickly, um, really kind of get a centralized picture more efficiently in terms of the health of the server environment, um, you know, and things of that nature. So that was really, I would say, one of the other areas that jumped out to me as kind of the imperative um, for taking some action and, um, you know, and kind of updating the server infrastructure now as opposed to later. Yeah, it's that holistic perspective for me. The server's obviously the crucial part, and that was where the research was, but it's those adjacencies for Ops RAM, for some of the other um, technologies that they've got that kind of take that view kind of broader, thinking about it from an operational perspective, thinking about it from a security perspective, thinking about it from a service of ability and support, being able to wrap that with a sort of um, holistic view from a sort of support perspective as well. I'm thinking about day two operations as much as just the physical server infrastructure. So fascinating discussion there, Krista. Really a lot to pick in and dive into and go through with this Gen 11 Proliant launch and what HP is doing more broadly with GreenLake uh, for compute. Recommend you read the research and take a look, and we'll see you next time on the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.